I need to have streamers for you, Kathy. <laughs> streamers? Okay. Streamers. You know, those little things that you party with? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. I'll, we'll watch the video in a second anyway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you probably thought you'd never see it before, right, darling? <laughs> I know all these guys too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh there's that famous bed. <laughs> Boys, you gotta share. You have to share. Good exercise music, Kathy. <laughs> yeah, I love the beat, actually. He was the youngest one on the set, babe.
<laughs> Not bad for getting off the plane from the Philippines, <laughs> right, babe? <laughs> That was it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> tell you why I love it because it's uh and hi everybody I'm here with Pepper Mache my my dear friend who is um <clears throat> is a great singer obviously and um I'm just getting over to my my what I have to get over to hold on one second and then I'm going to tell you why I love it <laughs> because It's well. First of all, it's it's real, and it's uh, you're very sexy. But you're sexy naturally. They're not putting you in these positions like right, right, exactly. <laughs> you know, which I really hate. It's just like, oh God, that makes me feel so weird. You know, well, right, right. You know, it's right. just no. You're sexy. You know, and you're, and you're going, you know, you know, whatever. But it's it's great. That that was really. I like it. And you know what, Kathy? I knew all the guys. Yeah. From doing shows around the country. Uh -huh. And they're they're mainly dancers. Yeah. So it was very comfortable for me to be around them. And of course, Chi Chi for for him to, to put the project together and it hit Billboard, which was great. Oh, nice. So <clears throat> but like I said, I had just got off the plane the night before from a from Bobby Caldwell's gig over in the Philippines. <laughs> and, then, and I had a, a 9 a.m. call, set call, to be there at the studio to put that video together. And you must have been I was ex I was screwed up. I was exhausted, darling. Yeah. Time change. Yeah. Because yeah. we were there for five days at least. Yeah. In the Philippines. Yeah. And that's a long trip. Yeah. Yeah. Well, pepper mache, um, pepper mache, no, also known as Sister Jean, <laughs> um, and she and I, we've known each other for a long, long time, but came across each other again uh, when I was booking a place downtown called Bar Fedora, and, um, and well, Sister Jean. <laughs> did a number of gigs there you know with her band and it was great it was really fun sometimes i even got to sing <laughs> you know what right or dance <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so <clears throat> yeah but you've you you have had such an a cool interesting history and it's always great to talk to you so i i thought i i wanted to have you on here you know so hi hi <laughs> <laughs> so um i don't know if i know a lot of your history as far as like where you're from how you grew up but i i am interested and this is a good um you know good platform to talk about it yes so tell, tell me the kind of the beginnings <clears throat> well um i i was born in muncie indiana oh. ball state university yeah. basically. Yeah. And uh, my mom married um, in her second marriage, she married a military man. So I initially became a military brat, uh, raised on the military bases of Fort Hood and Fort Leonard Wood. We were lucky, me and my brother, we only had to move around twice in my, in my stepfather's career. Yeah. at the time and from 60 i would say to 72 was the length of time that that i spent on a military base and then 
off and on going to school, elementary school from there. And uh, and then up until the time that I got married at 19 to my ex-husband, who was my high school sweetheart mm. at 19. And luckily for me, uh, he moved me along with his family out to California oh. of all places. Huh. So I ended up out at on the west coast in 73 yeah and that's where i really took hold of my music longings wanting to be in the business and were, were you singing before that were you as a kid uh just going back and forth to the the football basketball games on the bus <laughs> which infuriated my choir teacher who was unbeknownst to her of what kind of voice I had because I just, I didn't join the choir. I just felt, I didn't feel a need at the time to do that. Yeah. Until the last year of my high school, I decided to do, to join the talent show. <laughs> <laughs> and ended up winning that. And that really made her mad. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, from that talent show, I got involved with special services on the post, per participating in some of the events that they were putting together for the soldiers there. And I formed a little, a little mediocre band at the time of four people. And just started doing music and I started writing songs, Kathy, on an acoustic guitar that I taught myself, writing uh, melodies to my boyfriend, soon to be husband's love letters. Oh, wow. <laughs> and wow, just started that's, writing. That's amazing. That's how they direct people to write actually now, right? Exactly. <laughs> you just kind of naturally did it. I just naturally did it. And we're talking about uh, around the year of 70, 72 to 70, 71 to 73. Yeah. Until I decided to, uh, after we got married, his family were retiring out of the military. So we all went to California to start a new life. So was he okay with your singing? Oh, he was such a support. That's the reason why I married him. Uh, he was so behind it. Yeah, yeah. And it was just exciting to be involved in, 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 a, in a new career at the time. And of course, you know, with him having to go into the military because he was, you know, involved with the draft board and all that mess. So he joined the Air Force. And of course, we got stationed at Travis Air Base. And I guess that's between Fairfield. It's off of Fairfield, California, between Vallejo, which is a great area because it was right near San Francisco. Okay. So I got to see a lot of the, the up and coming bands at that time. Yeah. <clears throat> that's cool. So, so you were there for a while? We were there for about a year and a half. Uh -huh. And then after he got his orders to, and this was during the time of the oil crisis, Kathy. Okay. Dealing with Saudi Arabia and all that mess. Yeah. He got stationed over doing stuff over there, dealing with that. Meanwhile, I went back to, well, I went to Nashville. Oh. where my stepfather was living because he was retiring out of the military at the time also. Yeah. So I went back to stay with my parents, yeah. basically. Yeah. And so Nashville, was that like a whole op door opening thing for you? Uh, at the time, it, it, it was only because I had, you know, started learning how to play the guitar. So that was great. And I actually met up with a young man who was just 18 years old, Kathy. His name was David Murray. 
His brother, Jim Murray, was one of the founders of the gospel group, the Imperials. Jim literally was a star at the time when, when I saw and met up with them and his younger brother. And it was incredible because I think at that time, Jim was coming off of doing their own, uh, him and his group, the Imperials, they were doing their albums and they were just as famous as the Oak Ridge Boys. Wow. So it was a whole different atmosphere for me. But um, sadly, I didn't get a chance to really work with him and his group only because of the fact that they were on the road with Elvis, darling. They were doing stuff with Elvis at the time. Huh. Wow. They were, they were with Elvis, really? They were with Elvis. If you, if you look uh... at some of those tapes when... Elvis had the the sweet inspirations yeah. and you saw the other group that was Jim. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. It was, it was pretty, I, it was, it was really I incredible. That. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't watch Elvis that much, but right. still you, cause that sounds like a different kind of a, you know, thing with them. Exactly. Right? Yeah. But I was just bumping around Nashville with David. We would yeah. do a little duo and try to put bands, start bands. But mainly I had to go home because of my husband at the time. He was in the Air Force. Yeah. And he was stationed on another outside the country. So So you were you mean when you say you had to go home to Nashville or to, to Nashville. Nashville. Yeah. <clears throat> right, right. So yeah. You lasted there for a little while? And then... uh, from 73 to the end of 74, huh? when he finally got out of the military. Yeah. And it was at the downturn of the, of the uh, Carter administration. You know, the inflation was real high and everybody was being laid off. He, he just said, you know, instead of being laid off here in Nashville, let's go home to California. <laughs> let's go back let's go back so we went and we ended up in monterey on the monterey peninsula oh that's where his family was based out of yeah which is a a base there called fort ord okay so i stayed there decided to you know bump around doing little sessions here and there and became a house studio singer uh, at a at a uh, recording studio that used to be an ice packing in Monterey company. or San Francisco or? in Monterey. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I started as a background singer for all these English groups that were coming in, hmm. uh, like the Moody Blues and oh wow, uh, the Mark Allman band. Wow. John Mark and his 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 partner uh-huh. and started singing songs for for them, you know. Uh sometimes Paul Eichel would come in with a couple of demos that he'd need a singer or two and he'd hire me. Wow. Uh, back then. And was this under the name Pepper Mache or No, something? this was under the name Jean McLean. Oh, okay. Yeah. My real name. Yeah, yeah. And I would do waterbed commercials <laughs> for some of the businesses around Monterey. Uh, the one big thing that I did end up doing was the ID uh, for the station. I think it was for Channel 7 oh. there, uh, which I, I, I don't remember the call letters, but I did end up doing their station IDs for a while. Yeah. And the Santa, the Santa Cruz okay. Beach and Boardwalk. <laughs> I ended up doing theirs too. So I, I actually got into the business yeah. through Monterey. Huh? Yeah, yeah. That must have, that, that was an interesting time, huh? That was like the late 70s or something? Yeah, coming into the late 70s and how I jumped from that period of time, uh, Billy Davis and Marilyn McCoo of the Fifth Dimension, their production assistant ended up coming through town at the time and he happened to be at our studio 
I didn't know who he was and I never met him, but he started listening to uh, some of the, some of the stuff that I was doing along with a couple of other singers. And he liked my stuff so much to where he took it back to Billy in Maryland and from there, we're talking about 76, 77. Um, I ended up being signed to their production deal. Oh. Nice. And yeah, so I got involved with them. And because of the fact that me and the husband at the time were together, they liked that, that familial feeling that they got from me and him. So they signed me on the spot. Wow, you must have been a little excited. I was a little excited. <laughs> Not too excited because they from there I ended up in Vegas. Oh. <laughs> Had to move to Vegas. They wanted me to learn the craft. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that why you weren't all that excited because you had to go to Vegas? Well, I had a, I had at the time, darling, I had a four-year-old. Oh. And my mom was with me. By then, I had moved my mom out to be with me. And by then, my son was like four. Yeah. So I had to leave him with my mom and my husband and me and the guitar player, David Murray. Jim's brother, who was yeah. following us, yeah. you know, to different places, he went to Vegas with me. And we went to Vegas as a duo of uh -huh. all things. That's kind of weird. Yes. <laughs> I mean, not what you imagine. You it, it, exactly. We had no band. <laughs> it was just me and him playing our little songs that that he would write, that I would write. And we got away with that for like six to eight months at the Hacienda. Wow. Uh, so, the so, casino. Uh, so you said uh, <clears throat> the Fifth Dimension people, they they wanted you to go to Vegas to learn the business. Yes. So is that, do you feel like you learned the business there? Uh, I got done the business. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound good and you know it's like it's like anything else in 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 when you're young and you don't pay attention to people who do try to take advantage of you yeah. uh certain things do slip under the rug that you don't know huh. anything about yeah yeah so from there it was like you know number one I should have been set up a lot better going to Vegas. Yeah. Not knowing that they wanted you in those long gowns. Oh, God. Even if you're performing in the casino lounge. <laughs> 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 so that means that you have to come up with a budget <laughs> to dress yourself <laughs> and have a semblance of a band. So that you can, you know, do what you're supposed to be doing there, yeah. which we had to learn strictly, strictly by ourselves, just me and David. Wow. And it was a learning experience, that's, you know, that's really. Kind of like, uh, I hate to say it, but it was like a little uh, kind of, it, it feels a little irresponsible of them to just drop you off. You know, basically you're dropping, it's almost like dropping somebody off in a town and, and going, okay, take care of yourself. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. And what happened with us, the amount of money that me and David was supposed to be making. Yeah. Kathy, we didn't make. Yeah. And unbeknownst <laughs> to me and David, we didn't know what was going on until maybe I would say eight to 10 months after we had performed at the casino when one day the, the, the union rep came in and said, uh, you guys owe us $8,000 in dues. <laughs> and I'm looking at the, the union rep and I'm saying, I'm saying to him, we don't owe you that money. Cause you know what we were doing? <laughs> we were, 
we were only making less than we each were making like five hundred dollars a week yeah <laughs> so the amount of money that you say that we were making each week we weren't making <laughs> somebody else was making that money <laughs> <laughs> What happened uh, then? Did, did did you leave Vegas at that point or did you? I didn't have to leave, but what happened, we had already finished our, our term at Hacienda, but it was to the point to where, of course, someone was embezzling money under, yeah. under our contract. And because of the fact that I was threatening a lawsuit, <laughs> Uh, all of a sudden the union dropped it and basically we had already left the, the hotel resort hacienda and we just started me and david just basically started living in vegas during the the term to put the band put a band together because we had created a little noise yeah thanks to uh joan rivers Oh. Who walked? Who walked in <laughs> to one of our our little sing-alongs and enjoyed herself so much to where she interrupted our show to tell us, "You guys are great, but who who's your manager? <laughs> <laughs> who are the people who put you here? Did they tell you what you needed to do in order to get a get ahead here?" Oh, she went off on us, and wow. she would. She was pretty pissed at at the way that we were just just put into that spot and not knowing yeah. what to do, yeah. which was, you know, we're just scrunching our shoulders and saying, man, well, we we're just know. singer songwriters. Yeah, yeah. And we're just doing our music. And from then on, it, it became a learning session for me and David huh. to go and put a band together, which we did. And we lasted from 77 to till about the end of 79 when I I basically was walking around singing like Bonnie Tyler. My voice was so ravaged from the heat and singing and sleeping under air conditioners, which you're not supposed to do. <laughs> so by 79, that's when me and the husband at the time decided to, well, if we're gonna if we're gonna struggle like this, we need we need to go back home, huh. and that's what we did. Yeah. But instead of going to Monterey, yeah, we decided to come to Los Angeles. Huh. So Billy and Marilyn actually helped us find a place in LA huh. where I lasted for that that interim of time about 12 years huh. before we were able to buy our, our first home. Yeah. And really live like human beings. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is, this is a lot of moving around and a lot of experiences. Like yeah. Real focused experiences. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Interesting looking back at how, how, how you live you know it's funny i woke up why why did i why was i thinking that i was thinking this morning when i woke up i was realizing something about how i operate you know i talked to all these people right right um, right number 500 and you know 27 yeah and um but i realized this morning when i woke up for some reason that i i operate like i do because i was a poor Jewish girl growing up. And so wow. I didn't have a lot of money to use. I didn't, you know, I had, my mother was very creative. My dad was a musician. And so, but my mother was real creative. So I learned to, if I wanted to do something, I learned that I had to just put it together, you know? Yes. And, um, and, and, basically depend on myself and but you know I mean I would do it with other people but still there was there was a way I just was thinking about it that I kind of came along and even to this day it's like 
when somebody says, oh, you can't do that, and I want to do it, it's like, right, right. no, I can do it. <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah. And I think that's why. I think just how I came up and how I, you know, I wanted to do stuff and I was going to make it happen, you know. Right, right. Um, yeah, but it's it's interesting to look at one's history and see the decisions that you made along the way. Right, right. You know, and uh, and how it reflects. You, you have no you have no game game book to look at. Mm -hmm. You have to almost like create what you're gonna do, and and at this time in my life, I was I was carrying my second son. And I just wanted to be back in a normal situation, but I didn't want to go back to Monterey because I knew that the business was shifting even in San Francisco. Kathy, I don't know if you remember, but it's when all those labels were leaving. Oh. You know, the, the rock era had pretty much subsided. Yeah. So they, they were moving to different, you know, parts of the country. Yeah. And because we would have been happy just to stay in Monterey and work out of San Francisco, but the studios were leaving at the time. So that's when we decided to move to Los, Los Angeles and for me to plant my, my career on that, which it helped because I took the three years off basically to have my son, my, my second son. Cause I told my husband at the time, it, if you want these kids, you better have them now <laughs> on the downturn yeah. of what's going on with me, which was a good, a, a good period in my life because I decided I wanted to have children. Yeah. And right now my sons are 43 and 47 oh, wow. and they're happy to be here. Oh. <laughs> so I was happy to do that. And then after coming out of that period, my mom was with, with me. Mm -hmm. so that gave me the uh the time to to be away from them young but also when the oldest one started school she was there for him yeah and um my my husband at the time which i well, which was unbeknownst to me darling he had to he had to drive to irvine every day to for a job wow which is rough yeah. And I think uh, I think back on that period and time that was a lot to do with the split up of our marriage. Yeah. Who can do that? Yeah. Driving back and forth every day. Yeah, that's a lot. For 12 to 15 years he did yeah. that. Wow. So it's like I learned a lot at that time, but I also had good people who were behind me once they found out that I could sing and that, that one special person at the time that helped was Davy Farragher. Davy Farragher is like, was a godsend to me. Hmm. We were both, you know, young and, and eager to be in the business. He just grabbed me when he found out that I could sing as well as I could. And he just put me on sessions after sessions with him. And that's how I got known by a lot of the people in LA was through him. Yeah. So I, I have to thank him. And beside yourself, I would always read about you <laughs> doing every gig in, in, in Kingdom Come. Your name was everywhere, Kathy. And I just said to myself, I want to do what she's doing. <laughs> Put together a band and just play. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how I started, babe. And you were a role model of a person that I didn't even know. Isn't that cool? But I just saw wow. your name. I just saw you. You were grinding <laughs> at that time. I said, oh, my God, that's how you do it. Start from scratch. Do what you love and just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. That's so cool. That's really nice to hear. Yeah. I'm serious. I mean, yeah, that's you really know. nice to hear. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's fun. It's interesting. I, I remember speaking to a friend who was I, I never was ensconced in studio work. 
uh -huh. did some, but I, I was never a studio singer. But a friend of mine who was, I remember back then, she said, how, how do you, she said, how do you get out there and sing with a group? And I, I was, I, I, it just struck me so odd because she was so successful in studio work, but right. she really wanted to go out and sing. Wow. And she didn't know, she didn't even know how to be her own singer. Right. You probably right. did, I, I'm imagining, but she, she didn't, she did because she had only done studio work for years, you know. Incredible. Yeah. Well, I, I had did it on the post, Yeah. you know, when we were living in Monterey because we would, we would play yeah. to the soldiers. Yeah. Right. So that was something that I had already known to do. Yeah. Even when while I was in Fort Leonard with Missouri, yeah, because of special services, yeah, they they give you an opportunity to you know if you've got talent, they will definitely let you play the NCO clubs, is what they the non commissioned officers <laughs> clubs, yeah, and that's where I got my uh, experience in dealing with bands and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I would like to play a song um and uh <laughs> oh my i looked up sister jean on uh, youtube and it's not you but uh maybe i can uh, it's the other one right <laughs> well she's she looks like she might oh yeah she's 103 yeah anyway, sister jean e exactly and uh you are on spotify here uh -huh. And um, I'm. I would. I know you're on Apple Music too, but um, <clears throat> I was just. I was trying to remember which song I, I loved you doing. This this looks like singles almost. Are they? Or you know what that oh, the, uh, back to the back to the root. That was the record that I think I had right. Yeah, that's the yeah the acoustic stuff. The acoustic blues stuff. Yeah, I I remember. I mean, I liked this whole record. I think. Well, oh, you best know Henry. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I took that kind of feel for an arrangement of a standard that I just recently was working on with my no net. Right. Because I I loved this feel and the yes. song. <clears throat> um, did you write this? I forget. Yeah, I wrote this, and Carlisle came up with the arrangement, which was incredible. Let's let's listen to this. Okay, I I love this.
Oh, man. I love that. So good. Thank you. So CB, tell us about CB. Carlisle Barito. I met Carlisle, I think it was around 2005. Yeah. He had just joined Bobby Caldwell's band as the, as the guitar player at the time. Yeah. And uh, so talented, you know. And I just had a really good feeling about him. And I asked him when I approached him, would he do a, a blues project with me? Because yeah. I also did background work with Kent Moe, darling. Uh, okay. So I knew, I knew, knew Kent for like 20 some years, babe. I was a oh. big fan of his when oh. I finally got a chance yeah. to meet him. He Kent found me at the Continental. Remember the kind now? Yeah. Skippy Low had one of those. <laughs> Skippy Low. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Skippy had one of those sign-in sheets that you sign in. <laughs> and I guess I was down when I decided to do it. I told my husband, I said, we're going to go in here and make this $50. <laughs> so <laughs> I decided to go in to, to the Continental. <laughs> and this was like in the in the early uh, days of of the eighties, yeah. and I told I told the husband, "Let's go in. I'm gonna sing a couple of songs." Well, lo and behold, who was out there in the audience was Kev. <laughs> See, it just goes to show, man. <laughs> you just 
you know, it kind of doesn't matter that it was Skippy Low, you know. Darling, <laughs> it was my luck, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I had just came off of doing his project. And I said, you know what? I'm getting of age now to where uh, the dance music life is fun, but you need to do something else. Yeah. You need to do something else. So I decided to do a blues project acoustic wise. And I asked, I asked Carlisle, would he be the, you know, the guitar player? And eventually I knew how badass and great he was. You want to, you know, produce this thing on us. And he did. And you're listening to the songs that we co-wrote together. And it was a labor of love because off and on I would write the songs while we were over in Japan with Bobby. Oh. So I would, I would be in the hotel room finishing up on the project. And then when we got back home, we just decided to jump into it and just get it done. She's talking about Bobby Caldwell, by the way. She's she's saying with Bobby Caldwell, um, yeah. who also is delicious. You know, it's like uh, yeah. what you won't yeah. do for love, huh? Oh, God, that was the one that 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 I knew him from. Yeah, and and then as I got to know him and work with him, he's the father. Personally, to me, he's the father of smooth jazz. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. with all those saxophone players, oh my God, I spent four years with Boney alone. Yeah. That was the bomb. Wow. To me. Yeah. But Carlisle, when he did this project, it was it was a launching point for me to s- decide to to also go into the blues field. Oh. You know, to do that. And uh that's that's what we came up with with our first album. I love that album. Um <clears throat> By the way, um, first of all, Mary Bogue is here. You probably don't know her, but she said, girl, sing it. Henry should be so lucky to have your gorgeous voice wrapped all around him. <laughs> she's a great singer, too. She's a, you, you guys would get along really well. She's a, she's a great person and great singer. And Dolores Gazzezzi says sends her love. Hey, D. <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> I miss her, too, man. She has not been... We ha- we've bumped into each other very rarely in the last year or two. And it's like, yeah. Dolores, I want you. And exactly. She won't, she won't be interviewed on the show. Oh, you got to come on. It's fun. She's, she's too shy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wrote that, that Henry based off of Bad Bad Leroy Brown. Oh, really? You know, because I was a big Jim Croce fan growing yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I wanted something like that, yeah. but I, I and I wanted to put a little political tinge in, in the guy. He yeah. would be the person that would be standing up there with all of us standing in line to vote <laughs> down in the south and not be intimidated <laughs> because right. you had you had Henry standing up next to you. <laughs> yes, no Henry. <laughs> you know it, right? Yeah. Um, you know. Oh, thank you, Dolores. She's complimented. I, I want to take a peek at this. My friend Dan Davila, who I don't know if you remember Dan. He was the guy always sitting in the audience at Bar Fedora with oh. blonde hair alone. He'd be sitting in the front row. Right. Kind of quiet. Love him. Yes. Yeah. So he's he um, he usually uh, kind of researches on allmusic.com for my artists and so some some sometimes these are not accurate but a lot of times they are you you personally can go and take stuff out or put stuff in yes but here here you go like you're with anderson and thatcher yes featured artist uh dj escape yeah composer dj theo featured artist um, Summer Sessions 2009, a primary artist, vocals, Erica Jane. Um, of, of uh, what is that? Be- is that one of the Beverly Hills people? It call- it's Beverly called Housewives. Pretty- <laughs> I don't know, but it's called Pretty Mess. Yeah, it was one of her first records. <laughs> <laughs> Milk and Sugar. Uh, a duo out of U- the UK, darling. Great production team. 
cool. Uh, D O N S. No, no, ma'am. Uh, Chris Montana. Love DJ Kimberly. Kimberly's DJ. out of here, babe, out of Los Angeles, DJ. Okay, then there's like club vibes, garage classics, Roger yeah. Sanchez. Yeah. <clears throat> Pepper Mache. I think you know her. <laughs> <laughs> Turn It Up America, Nouveau Dance Hits, a number of records that you have. There's greatest hits. Right. <clears throat> um, David Knapp. There, there's a David Knapp record. Love David Knapp. Great DJ out of Atlanta, darling. Okay. DJ Fat Joe, that's a cool name. Um, Monster Taxi, Daniel Desnoyers. Out of Canada, of all places. Oh, okay. Yeah, he found me when I was doing Toronto Pride. Uh huh. Gino. Don't know who that is. A number of the, these look like you're the primary artist, so it looks like more of the dance music. It, 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 this is Pepper Mache stuff, huh? Okay. Underground yeah. explosion. Uh Colton Ford. Yeah, we did Side Seal Delivered, Stevie's song together. Okay. Uh Randy Bettis. Uh Rosabelle, Party Groove. Yeah. More dance stuff. Thunder Puss, Thunder Puss. Now those are the two guys that that basically would hire me to come in and do background vocals oh, on some of their productions, like Whitney. Yeah. Uh, for what I understand, they uh, uh, Chris Cox, yeah, uh, put me on "My Love Is Your Love" for Whitney nine times as a choir. Hun. Wow, I was part of the choir. Oh, and out of that, Barry Harris, who wrote "Dive in the Pool," that was his partner. Oh. That is his partner because, from what I understand, that they're back together performing. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Wayne G. Manny Lam La Lemon? Layman. Layman. Manny Layman. Another David Knapp thing. Uh, Scott Michael. Um, He's an I artist. Have I seen this before? Ibiza World Tour? Yeah, crazy. <laughs> that that whole place over there off of Spain. Uh-huh. Ibiza. Ibiza? Something like that? Is that how you pronounce Ibiza. it? Ibiza. Ibiza. How, yeah. Was that a tour that you did? Uh, what it is, uh, I'm looking at these and these are coming off as, as compilations. There are DJs that are, that perform wow. over there, but they pick and choose certain songs that, um, bring to mind yeah. that area. Yeah. Um, then, uh, let's, here's a Barry Harris thing, uh, Judge mm -hmm. Jules. <laughs> yeah, these are all DJs, babe. Okay, Riddler. Here's Craig, Chris Cox. And there's an Artful Dodger. Artful Dodger. I love them because they took a couple of my songs and remixed them mm. and turned them into gems. I love what they did. Uh, the dance music or what? Dance music. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, Craig David. Love Craig David. Oh. And he's gorgeous on top of it. <laughs> he's it's, always, cute. it's always nice when somebody's gorgeous, you know. Just yes. Nice looking, you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, Julian Marsh. Love uh, Julian out of Florida at the time. Yeah. Tough Jam, DJ Alexia, Eddie Armador, Clemens Rumpf. Nice yes. And, and we did a really good track to, to this day, Ellen beats me up over she thinks that it's my climate change song oh really yeah call our world i was feeling really kind of down at the time it was the, during the uh the crash darling of 2008 we were all going through it at the time the clubs were closing and uh they they didn't really want to open up because they were so afraid of the terrorist threats yeah and nobody was really flying. Yeah. Kathy at the time. Right. So I had to insulate at the time. Uh, not a lot of work. I was in the process of losing my duplex, the whole thing. Yeah. And having to start all over in redefining my career. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. 
<clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm just re uh, writing to somebody while I'm uh, just got to get that. Um, Dolores was telling me that uh, there was a link that I have in on the page that's not working. So. Oh, okay. I don't know why. That's really an interesting, interesting thing. Uh, why it's not working. <clears throat> and I guess I'll just have to kind of redo that link. Thanks, Dolores, for pointing that out. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> okay, so we're we're moving through this, uh, the, the history of you, which is a lot. It's really, you know. And the reason why I haven't been fortunate uh, uh, enough, Kathy, to do actual albums yeah. because I think that I came in during a period of time, especially in the UK, with the dance music, because that's where I started, literally. Um, it was the changeover from the artist to the DJ. Uh-huh. They were wanting to be the artists. Oh, yeah. And the whole industry changed over that. That's and interesting. And to have your label tell you, um, even though you're in the top five of 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 the BBC, yeah, we're going with DJs, and which changed my life overnight into thinking, well, if that's the case, then I can't really establish a career here in the UK or in Europe. Period. I might as well go on back home. Yeah. And then that's how I got involved with Chris and Mary. You and know, at that time it was called circuit music. <laughs> oh, really? I've never heard that. Different. It yeah. was a different form of dance music, which to this day I have uh, 30, 30, 40 somethings telling me, you know, you created a whole genre of music and you didn't even know it. It's called when circuit. You were, yeah, no, no. Uh, before circuit, darling, oh. when I was in Europe. Yeah. What was and the, was it a, was there a name to it as the genre? They called it uh, garage or garage. It, it's, it looks like when you see the word. Oh, yeah. Now I've heard, have I heard that with Garage Soul or something or? Something like that. But it's like, to me, it's like break beats. You yeah. know, things are fast and you're singing at a certain tempo and the, and the groove underneath is, is fast and furious. Oh. Or it's just soulful and they're doing that. But the, the guys of today yeah. complain to me that you didn't even know what you were singing and writing at the time and it created a whole genre for us and yeah. then when you decided decided to go to circuit which was more of the when you go to some of the gay clubs you'll see the guys dancing with no shirts and just just all out there together that's what i ended up introducing myself into into this genre when I came back home okay and basically to me it it took the soul not to say that it was a bad thing but it took a lot of the soulfulness to me yeah because what I was doing in the UK with groups like Tough Jam uh, or the Art Artful Dodger remixing it was so funky uh -huh. I couldn't even touch myself <laughs> it was so good and I said, that's the kind of music that I wanted to do. But the label at the time that I was signed to, when he decided to pull, pull away from vocalists and go strictly with DJs, that was the end for me. And I had to go and redefine myself somewhere else. <clears throat> so, um... I want to hear some of that. Do you, do you, do you have records of that or recordings? Uh, into You 
is one by Grant Nelson. It's up on uh, YouTube. <coughs> so if I just type in, in into, into you, you. Uh, pepper mache. Okay. Okay. So this says, well, it's there's a. I'll show it to you. Let's. Is this it? Um, right there. Pepper mache. Anything house. I got my pride. No, not that one. And then they use. If you notice, they spell my name wrong. They forgot the a. Oh. <laughs> Shea. <laughs> That's mache. That's another problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what, darling? Go to. Uh, yeah. It. Type in in yeah into you. And then uh, put, put the full name, Pepper Mache. There it is, the club mix, babe, right, right there. there. Yeah. Let's, let's hear just a little bit of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> come on, come on. hung up a little bit but we'll we'll hear it of course of course always it's probably just kind of uh, you know whatever here we go this was like one of my favorite tracks that i did with him and 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 you know what kathy this this whole dance thing over in london it gave me the opportunity to write all my songs oh. along with the dj yeah one or two of the members yeah It's not wanting to play so much, but oh, um, we'll yeah. try again. Sure. Long intro. <laughs> <laughs> I like Sorry, that. Sorry, babe. This is house music, babe. <laughs> right. So that you know, this is house music. Uh, uh, the DJ license of remixing. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of it, it took so long to get into the vocals, babe. A lot of it, what? It took so long to what? Get into the vocal. Oh. The, the meat of the song, because they, yeah. they do all the, 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 this is a remix. So this is not the meat of the song, right? No, no. Here we go.
And that's how it goes, Kathy, throughout that yeah. whole thing. Wow, that's, this is cool. Um, yeah, yeah, you sound really great. Yeah, I did all my background vocals. Sound great, yeah. Um, so for people like Bobby Caldwell, were, were you the only backup singer or was there several? Uh, you know what? He's had several before me and the, 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 uh, oh God, there was one artist that he had that I was a big fan of hers, Yeah, but I, I forgot her last name, but it started with Maxine, the bomb. Maxine, uh, not Nightingale, oh. Maxine. No. Maxine. And she was signed to Motown at the time, oh. at, at one time, darling, that I was a big fan of. Yeah. And, oh, my goodness, she left, and then that's when I came in and filled in. Yeah. But I also did uh, Heaven Must Have Sent You. I actually got to do a duet with him, oh, God. which was great. I bet that's on video somewhere, right? YouTube or something. You know what? It it it, it if it's not, it it's listed under his uh one of his I think it was the Soul Survivor album that he did. So you did it uh recording on the album? I actually I actually got to do a duet with him which was wonderful. Yeah. Oh, and don't ask my neighbor. Oh my god. Huh. On this particular track that that we did for Bobby Hunt which really warmed my heart every time I think about it. We had, it was me, Jackie Goucher, who's like one of the baddest singers here in the city. And, oh my God, what was his name? One of David Foster's premier singers, Guy, Guy Singer, babe, back in the day. And I forgot his name, but he ended up on that project. He didn't, he didn't, last with us too long hunt on earth oh he committed you know suicide oh, yeah and uh he was a wonderful wonderful singer he was on that session with us and I, i'll never forget it but don't ask my neighbor it was one of the baddest tracks the, of covers that anybody did off of that song you was you, you know it was the um, the emotion song huh um, and we yeah, we I mean, ended up doing it. It was phenomenal. The track. Um, I was just looking to see if I could find oh, Tommy God. Banks. No, he was a musician. Let's see. Um, hmm. Uh, huh. I don't know. Me neither, and I didn't even buy. You know, I don't bother to, to pull up anybody's other, you know, material that I do. Yeah. And I should because a lot of the people that I actually invite to come in and sing with me yeah. when I'm doing these projects are just phenomenal people. Yeah. And was, uh, we were at, um, we've seen Lisa Fisher at Catalina's. If oh, <laughs> can I tell you a little short story about her? Sure. Now I'm I'm not only am I out here singing for everybody and their mother, but I started going back and forth to New York. Yeah, um, you should sit back a little. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Okay. <laughs> and, you got excited and, there. <laughs> I did, and I would you know run into all these singers that I was able to sing with, and I knew who they were. They just didn't know who I, I was the new kid on the block. Right. And when I saw her, the most quietest person I ever knew in my life. Really? Until six, seven years later, when she, when she, she won the, she tied the Grammy. Remember with Patti LaBelle. <laughs> She's incredible. And I'm thinking to myself, is this the same person that I was saying, this meek and mild person <laughs> <laughs> who was so sweet to me oh. and, and so awesome in yeah. singing and then to find out that she was singing with Luther. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> I said, damn. <laughs> 
my favorites of people that I didn't even know were like that were the nicest people here on earth. You hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just just yeah. incredible talent. There's a lot of, um, I've talked to a number of background singers who came up like you did. And uh, <coughs> I haven't talked to Good anyone. Question. Thank you. I haven't uh -huh. talked to anyone who was not really nice. I don't know. I mean, I guess uh, maybe it, being a background singer, I mean, maybe you become nice or you have to be nice to start with because people won't hire you otherwise. Right. I don't, nobody wants a diva backup singer, right? No matter right, how good right. they are. Right. I've, I've, I've never been approached into a situation where the people were, were just so out, unfriendly. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's 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 always been on that level, but with Lisa, it was like go. It was like a golden person. Wow, that 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 you could just talk to her and just be normal, and then to find out that this is a beast, yeah, of a singer, yeah. I mean, gorgeous, yeah. When she was with Luther, and then to turn around and. How can I ease the pain? I'll never forget that song, that video when it came out. And that was Lisa. <laughs> and I would say to myself, that, that's my Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> you know, to this day, you know, she just looks at me and smiles when I say that, but I can't help <laughs> it. You know, you just don't know who yeah. you're dealing with when you're with these people Yeah, sometimes. They're just yeah. awesome. Yeah. Okay, and then your career, somehow, somewhere in there, you you did Hugh Laurie. Yes, ended so up Hugh, doing both. Hugh Laurie, uh, I I remember when you first brought that up when I when I we were doing Bar Fedora, and I was like, Hugh Laurie, you mean the actor who does the the yeah. how what is Doctor House or House Doctor House the House House show, yeah, and, who sounded like he was from America. Yes. Not only is he English, but he's a blues singer. <laughs> I mean, come on. And, <laughs> you know, Pepper's working with him. So it's like, wow. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, and, and I, I got through on that project by, by way of Joe Henry, singer songwriter. Yeah. Who ended up producing Hughes albums. Okay. Which was marvelous because I came to Joe Henry through Nikki, uh, Madonna's background singer, Nikki. Okay. And, and, and was able to do that, darling, that project. And she just asked me out of the blue one day, we ended up on a session at a studio. She asked me, would you like to come in and sing with me for, you know, for, um, a, uh, a person that I, that I do a lot of background singing for. <laughs> and I looked at it and I laughed because I said to myself, me of all people, all the people that you know, you know, you know, Jelly Bean and Donna DeLore and all these folks, you're asking me to come in and sing with you. I said, <laughs> I will be more than happy to. <laughs> and that, that ended up being a love fest forever. You know, so that's how I met Joe. And then by then, Nikki had moved to New York, her and her child. And um, I started singing with Joe on a whole bunch of people. We did Loud and Wainwright. Um, uh, wow. Elvis, I did, I think I did some stuff for Elvis Costello, Susan Tedeschi. Oh. Whole bunch of people, darling. I became one of his background singers, which he would call. Was he, was he a contractor or what was he? Well, he, number one, he was a singer songwriter, par none himself. Oh. And he just started producing. Yeah. I think he came out of T Bone Burnett's crew. Okay. Little core group. Yeah. And uh, I became one of his background singers. And it just so happened that he was working on this project. He says, you know, would you want to sing for Hugh Lowry? And anytime anybody asks me, you know, do I want to do these projects? I'm always saying yes, if I'm not busy yeah. or out of town with Bobby. Yeah. 
So I happened to be in town and I was able to uh, sing on Let Them Talk, which is Hugh's first album. And on that badass record, he had Tom Jones, who I had to just love up every time I saw him. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. Oh, my God. Uh, Irma Thomas and of, and of my heart, Dr. John. Oh my God, I was able to, you know, between you and Dr. John and a few other people, Kathy, I've been able to, to do my own Adore Fest by letting you know that I've been keeping an eye on you. <laughs> and either through growing up, I told Dr. John that my parents, when we were stationed at Fort Leonard Wood, my mom and dad, would drive me and my brother to St. Louis wow. to, to pick up records that I would order online at the time, mail order. And his Gree Gree man was one of them. Night Tripper, Dr. John, the Night Tripper. <laughs> they would, we would go 120 some miles for me to pick up my records. <laughs> while seeing uh, my father's cousin or somebody over at East St. Louis. And I was able to tell him that. And he just, he just, he said, he said, baby, you are so cute when you just smile. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell him that. Yeah, that's all so because of that session. Wow. You know, and it made me feel so good, you know, before his passing. Yeah. Say those things and give him a big hug. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. Dan, Dan has posted two, th well, several things. Um, he posted, uh, he posted you at Barfedora, which I don't I know love which it. one that is. Or, and he Ooh. also posted um, two Hugh Laurie things. Uh, one was a star ceremony. Yeah, I actually got to sing for him, Kathy, at his walk, of, his star on the Walk of Fame. Oh, and also with uh, with Hugh and Joe Henry at El, the El Rey Theater. Yes. Yeah. Should I watch any of that? You you can't. You do you have time? Do yeah. we? Are you sure you have time? Yeah, we Kathy? have. You know, this is a two hour show. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for my 70th right I get, the, yeah. I get the 70th special right is this it's not your is it your birthday today it's today babe oh man <laughs> i forgot you said that happy birthday <laughs> pepper mache <laughs> oh my god we're born the same year that is so cool yeah that's so cool kathy I knew that we were inter intertwined some kind of yeah. way. Yeah, I, I turned 70 in, at the end of May. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. Interesting. Okay, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out the star ceremony. Let's see. Oh. Here you are. When I Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, he 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 requested that, Kathy. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, that was one of the best I think we've ever had. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. And then, um, let's see, while we're here, um, you know, what the heck? Let's just see which, which song this is. It, it, this... <laughs> yeah, we had some. We had some throwdowns on those songs, did we, babe? Bad so ass. good, so good. Whoa. Yeah, that was that was Bar Fedora for those of you who don't know that. So I booked that place for about two and a half years. You sure and, did. And Pepper was uh, sang there. It was really fun. Um, and yeah, that was that was nice. That was good. We had a great time, babe. Yeah. You sounded great there. Yeah. Great. You know, since I've seen you, we actually got a chance to do the, uh, with different musicians, of course, because, you know, everybody's into, you know, when they get those road gigs, yeah. like Bill, the bass player, uh -huh. plays with Taylor Dane now, oh. which is great. Yeah. And Carlisle plays with him, with her off and on. Oh. But uh, we just did the, hol the holiday Christmas celebration the Christmas Eve celebration. And I got in to do uh, Merry Christmas, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been fun. <laughs> it was great. It was on PBS, Kathy. Oh. You need to do it. Ah, oh, sheet. That's I'm nice. Serious. That's nice. And that was really, that was a lot of fun, you know, because I always said that it'd be nice to do something here at home that lasts. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of that, what, uh -huh. are you, what are you doing now? Well, right now I'm definitely uh, um, this birthday is going to probably look like it's going to end up going to the end of the month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm uh, Tampa, Tampa people who I did Tampa on the river in September. They're throwing a birthday party celebration for me at the end of the month. So I'm gonna go down there, you know, oh. and and do that, and um, take a and then take a little time off, darling. Me and Carlisle under Sister Jean and CB, uh, I'm doing my my first protest song oh. called "Shadow People," and it's about the immigration. Oh. And I'm I'm scheduling. Uh, a meeting between me and Dolores Huerta, mm -hmm. who was with Cesar Chavez, of course, uh -huh. and presenting the song to her because of we're not getting the kind of uh, support from a certain party to start the immigration reform. We're just not. And now that the way that the 
Congress is is set up in the House, it's just it just seems like we're going backwards instead of forward. Yeah. So I'm releasing that song in April, around the end of April, uh-huh. and and then from there I'm trying to get me and the band into the music center hmm. uh, to do some some stuff during the summer uh-huh. in between me doing the pepper mache pride festivals and stuff like that. Yeah. But there's a lot of political activism that I'm doing right now uh-huh. because I'm not happy with what's happening with not only the LGBTQ community, but also with making sure that people can vote yeah, and do it on that level. So that's what's going on with me right now. Yeah. Other than getting ready for a couple of other projects that I've got to do with the band and myself. Yeah. I was just watching Bill Maher last night. Um, I like watching his show because I find that he's, he's kind of moved away from being a dyed in the wool. Uh, exactly right and a democrat and but i like it because he he's not afraid to have anybody on the show so right last night (laughs) was interesting it's i don't know his name i've seen this guy before standing up for ivermectin and uh he's very educated and very passionate about it so uh and the guy who the other guy was kind of apparently on the other side of the conversation. Uh-huh. And so it was really interesting, you know, and, um, but that's why I like the show because right, people, right, they can disagree and they can, you know, you hear a lot of sides, you see people who are pretty sane on that show. You right, know? right, right. It's just that I have one bone to pick with Bill. Yeah. Uh, when the Republicans took over that term woke, it wasn't to the point to where we're black and brown people are just pressing the issue of our history on everybody. People have got to understand, and I will say this being a kid from the military, when I was being raised in Fort Hood, Texas, I didn't know about a lot of the stuff that slavery we were pressed upon mainly about the presidents. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, but you really didn't understand the scope of that history. Yeah. We were always talked about George cutting down that cherry tree. We knew a lot about that cherry tree. <laughs> and we also knew a lot about Abraham Lincoln. It wasn't on the basis of him free in anybody other than him being a, a Midwestern lawyer who basically lost his mother at a, at a young age, that kind of history. Yeah. When it comes to anything else, you learn that stuff on your own. Yeah. If you learned it at all. Yeah. And I basically grew up as a kid who always read jet magazine, Ebony magazine, getting that kind of history and then living in Nashville, we were right in the middle of the riots. I didn't know about the riots, Kathy, in our neighborhood, which literally you could walk to Fisk University where I lived, which to this day, it kind of hurts me because I would have wanted to have gone to an HBCU. Mm -hmm. didn't know that didn't know none of that yeah and now that i'm i'm 70 and i know a lot about um the history of black and brown people because of my own education that i've had to acquire over the years there's nothing wrong with being woke it's the idea that one group decided to take that and they they weaponized it yeah oh yeah and and it's not right when when people accuse people of wokeness wanting to take down 
Lincoln statue because I've not seen that. I've only seen the Confederate leadership. Yeah. Those statues. Yeah. And what they've what they've meant to the history of this country. Yeah. That was purposely put up to keep black folks in check. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's just the way that that I take it. Yeah. And and Bill has turned it into a negative thing, thinking that, well, they took down Lincoln statue. That's not being woke. Well, that's not for me to say. On on if if you allow that to happen and you didn't explain that, that's just another example of when David, when when Steven Spielberg did Schindler's List and all those kids either in San Francisco or in Compton, they didn't know anything about the Holocaust. That is wrong. Everybody needs to know about that. Yeah. That's part of history, period. Yeah. And for you to encapsulize one item to say, well, wokeness, that's not a good thing. That's, that's not right. Yeah. It's how, it's how you interpret that. Yeah. And to me, he, he's been on this rampage about it to where wokeness to me means that you've learned about the history of this country. Yeah. And you've, you've got to come to terms with it to appreciate it yeah of, of how all people bring things to the table yeah I, that's I, my opinion yeah, babe that's okay that's a good opinion it's a uh, you know yeah i i i mean there's so many layers to it which is basically what you're saying there's right, the layers right. and you have to know you have to know the layers it's and that's why i don't i have not really given my opinion a lot over the years like with friends talking about politics because i i don't know enough right right i can say what i can you know i can say this because yeah can, you know but it, there's so much more and so i mean um and usually over the years people would get pissed off talking and i just it was like well i don't i'd like to have a discuss. I'd like to learn. So yeah, if you yeah. Have something to tell me about it. Great, right, and right. I'd like to learn about it. Um, I mean, I would have a, uh, experiences like um, this black singer was in a class at UCLA that I was subbing for. Right, a jazz class, and she was telling the white singers that they had no right to sing jazz. That's so, stupid. Yeah. So we wa we walked to the car together because we knew each other and she yeah. was kind of going on and on. I said, you're, you're not a slave. You're not from slave. You, uh, you directly are not a slave and your parents weren't. You were from right. a wealthy family in New Orleans. And I am Jewish and my parents were not directly from the Holocaust either. Right. I, I could... I could go on a rant about the Holocaust and what right. rights I have and stuff, but that's that's not helping anything. No, it's not helping. Yeah, exactly. And 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 for her to even assume that, yeah, because of you got to look at John Hammond. Remember when Hammond would say that he would sneak out of his mansion in New York, going to those juke joints, yeah, and and discovering. Ma Rainey, yeah, or Bessie Smith, yeah, you know, and hearing the music that he ended up loving and then passing it down to his son, John Jr. Yeah, that's wrong, yeah, and you just have to call it when you see it and when you hear it. It's just the idea that some of the Confederate statues yeah. were put up to keep certain people in check yes because they could do that right. and but as you get older and you understand what those symbols mean yeah then you make a decision on whether you you keep them up or you take them down yeah but you let it be known to the 
the, the, the next generation that's coming up behind you what it means. Yeah. Yeah. And let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. And actually it's, I mean, I don't know if I'd leave it up for this reason, but on the one hand, if you do leave it up, it's, it's an, and, and let known the true history. And you're yes. actually in, you're actually informing people. Yes. About it, which is exactly, cool, you know, exactly. Yeah. So, I, you know, this picking and choosing and, and banning stuff, Yeah, you know, I have a problem with these, this book banning business. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that, that to me is a freedom that's given to us in the Constitution. Yeah. If you got freedom of guns, then we should have the freedom of our books. <laughs> right. You know, if you got the freedom of guns, then you should have the freedom of, of, of what you want to read. Yeah. So that's where I see it at. Yeah. So that, that's been a large part of, of the second half of my life because I got a lot of little ones right now. And Kathy, whether I like it or not, I am the matriarch of my immediate family right now. Uh-huh. I've outlived everybody. Yeah. And I plan to, to keep living a number of years to, to do that. Yeah. to pass stuff down to my family, the youngest members of the family. Yeah. So music along with that, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a lot to do, man. It's a lot. Never thought that I would ever get this age. You know, I, I've outlived my mom. I, I did say that when she passed. Yeah. 20 some years ago, I, I said that I want to make, I want to make this an important milestone for myself that I get to 70 because I know how hard she worked uh-huh. taking care of me and my brother. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mark Winkler just joined and he said, hello, I love you. <laughs> Hello, I, we love you too. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about everything, Mark. Writing, yes. singing, her history, politics. Uh, we, we've we've been talking about a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. doing really well too. You know, yes. he's still recording r- albums and um, writing, and he's uh, teaching writing courses. You know? Yes, yes. You you know, uh, Mark was my, you know, I don't know if he wants everybody to know this, but he was one of my bosses at my job. Oh, I think I vaguely remember that. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, and that that's another core group of, of family. Yeah. You know, in, in, in my uh, history. Well, what, where was that? Uh, it was a, a company at the time called NRG, uh-huh. and it was uh, the type of company where you give the people the, the tickets to go see the movies, and then they have to fill out a card, Yeah, that kind of thing, Yeah, which um, I never really went into detail with Mark over it, but it was the first job after my separation of my from my ex-husband. Oh that I actually got myself involved with online. <laughs> it was an online, you know, answering the application and all that. Huh. And I just took a chance and I went in and got the gig, you know, got the job. And it was right near at the time <laughs> where I used to live over off of Wilshire and La Brea. Okay. It was right across the street from Mocha. Okay. Yeah, that big tall building. Yeah. And I learned how to I learned how to work <laughs> on my own <laughs> alongside the music, darling. So that was pretty big. That was big for me. Yeah. And when Mark when Mark found out who I was, <laughs> I thought I was gonna get fired and I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Because I didn't put it down on my application that it was, you know, one of these entertainers that go in and out traveling and stuff. And and it was really something when he called me into the office 
He said, you're Pepper Mache, aren't you? <laughs> Say yes, Mark. Say yes. <laughs> well, that was, it was probably um, after he, he had a lot of kind of um, career success, that early career success that he had as a smooth jazz guy. Yes. Yeah, so he... He could relate. He said, you found the perfect boss. I did. did, and, did, and did, did it, right? Yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> said uh, early 2000s. Yeah. That was really awesome because I had, I was so scared of, you know, well, how am I going to take care of myself? I'm leaving this man of 20 some years at the time. And the sons are deciding, well, you leaving, we're leaving too. <laughs> So now I got, I've got 20 something young men with me, <laughs> you know, I'm still their mother. So I have to still take care of them. Yeah. <laughs> and I apply for a job and I get it. And then it ends up being one of the most impetus situations that I could have ever gotten myself into, which was great. And to this day, uh, our friend, and Mark will attest to this, charming Evelyn, who is like par none one of the best people dealing with the Sierra Club folks, the climate change, water especially. Um, we became like a family, all of us. Mm. And Brett, I still keep in contact with him. It's like a little, a little core group of four to five people, darling, that we keep in contact to this nice. day from that job. Yeah. Interesting, right? Yeah, yeah. But um, life goes on, hun. You know, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm gonna be around when I see you in 80, <laughs> but we have to plan on this. You have to keep the show going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 80. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know. There are people I know over 90 who are still working. And still doing their thing. Yep. They're still doing it. They're wow. They're called specifically to come out and do it. They travel. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure the body, you know, feels a little older and, but it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And they have so much to give, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Um, let's see. I have I'll do one more maybe one more music thing um <laughs> it's fun isn't it because i'm just like pulling out stuff that you probably haven't seen for a while <laughs> Ooh, this was the early stuff kathy <laughs> this was another favorite of mine okay I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. 
That was at Genghis. Yeah. I had just came off the road with uh, Hugh. Uh, with Hugh? Yeah. Yeah. you something um yes, babe. so uh as a singer yeah um i noticed i just was noticing that um um this style as as well as jazz you know leaves a space you know they're yes. conscious of space like we always say space is an extra note you know it's not nothing it's it's actually something to use is that in this style of singing is that something that's stressed uh, like amongst people who speak of what to do with it and how to sing it as far as uh, b the blues genre or yeah, just in general yeah. you know what i just took it off of when i would look at some of the youtube tapes of big mama thornton um Mavis even. Yeah. Just in uh spontaneous. Yeah. Im impromptu, is that how they call it? Yeah. Or you mean uh, improvisation or yes, improvisation, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. If you can get up and sing with just a just somebody tapping on a table with a pen. Yeah. You you've got to be able to show that emotion yeah interpret it in your mind on what what you're hearing and how to present that back to an audience yeah that was just my way of feeling it kathy yeah. right and not so much of being spot on when you're with a band yeah. when you're with a different amount of musicians well yeah especially being a background singer there are parts right exactly and you and when you're a background singer the way that i approached it uh -huh. was on the level of being able to number one be a team player number two listen to either side of who you're singing with to blend yeah i always blended and it was never a situation where you had producers telling you such and such you're too loud you gotta back off you know you you i got those little nuances every now and then only because of the fact of being on the road a certain amount of time you you have to readjust yourself when you're in a studio situation but very seldom was i was i ever uh i would say not reprimanded but said to you're singing too loud, you guys. You're singing too loud. Everybody get amongst yourselves. You always knew to adapt when you had professional people because I was never a reader. 
that was always my problem in not going as far as I should have in the business. I just never learned how to read. So I always knew that if I was going to come into any situation, you had to adapt to a certain way of presenting yourself in the tones of what what you were singing in, that kind of thing, to, to blend, even if it was in a club setting. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like you're, you're self-censoring, you're self-censoring a certain sound that you have. Yeah that comes off automatic. Yeah. A very pleasant sound. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's really an interesting uh, art form, really, because it is an art form. You, you, do, yeah. you do have to develop and get good at it. Right. I used to be, I used to be so good. Uh -huh. I will tell you right off the bat, Kathy, when I was starting yeah. in, in that Monterey ice packing studio <laughs> did they have me doing parts back then darling that i wish that to this day i had those tapes yeah because there was some stunning stuff that i did yeah. in just blending with myself yeah you know um to this day i have to look at maybe one or two people that i just say those people when they're singing they are fierce yeah because their blend is so tight, mm -hmm. you can't even take a knife, slice yeah. it in the middle. Yeah. It's so nice and pleasant and thick. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I got into trouble, and I tell everybody this to, to this day. If you're going in to have any kind of a surgery or anything, you must tell the anesthesiologist that you're, number one, you're a singer. And that please protect, you know, when you're putting the tube down. Because I didn't on my first uh, surgery that I had. Female trouble. And it got me into a whole bunch of trouble. With It, it lowered my timber. Mm. Literally. So I had to readjust my, my way of singing over the years. Mm. Yeah. Do they still do that? Uh, like put it down your throat? Uh, on certain instances, they still do. And it could be um, who, whatever medical insurance you've got, that kind of thing. I didn't have a PPO, so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mine was HMO. Yeah. So you, and, but just to be sure, you, you have to really let them know. And I, and mine was pure ignorance. I had no idea yeah. that I was supposed to have told this, the particular person. Yeah. yeah. So, so that was a, that was a situation back in the early two thousands that I had to learn yeah. to, to readjust the way that I was singing. What key I used to, there used to be times that I was the only one in on the session. Yeah. And I could go up and down the keys yeah. of, of what key I was singing in. Yeah. But that came to an end when that, that incident happened yeah. where I actually started, you know, hiring other singers to come in and sing with me. Yeah. Wow. So. Well. You live like, and learn. Sounds like you're doing fine now. Um, it. So I'm going to end off here because it has yes. been two hours and it's been really fun talking with you. I, you know, I mean, cause you don't, even though you hang out, you don't sit and find out about somebody for two hours, you know, it just doesn't no, happen. So it's, no. it's really cool. And now I get who you are more. And um, I mean, I mean, I was always impressed with you as a person and a singer, but I didn't know a lot of your history. Wow. You, no. you had a super impressive history. Well, I'm I'm glad that you that you actually ended up doing this kind of format. Yeah. The broadcast, which was really incredible and given all of us an opportunity, you know, for me to sit up and talk to Mark Isham. <laughs> am I saying his name right? Yes. Uh-huh. Boo. <laughs> I have that 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 soundtrack trouble in mind of his. 
<laughs> you know, I know a lot about what he does, and it yeah. is incredible. He's incredible. You know, some of the people that you've had on here are just mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. singers, you know, that I've not been able to meet yeah. over the years are just incredible people, you know. Yeah. So you, to me, you have did an indelible service to all of us by having this show. Thanks. You know, it's, I think it's been good. You know, yeah. I, I feel like it's, it's a win-win, you know, in a, in a few different ways. So I feel right. good about it and I'm just going to keep doing it until I don't want to. <laughs> 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 Whenever that is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I thank you for having me on 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 an, uh, a a really uh, important day of my life. Yeah, my birthday. I can't thank believe you. it. Thanks for being on on your birthday. Who knows? Maybe you guys are going to go off and do something fabulous. Are you today? Uh, well, she's already did the fabulous part, baby. Antarctica. <laughs> oh yeah. That was pretty amazing. She, ah! I don't know if I, you guys heard, but Pepper just came back from Antarctica. <laughs> for two weeks, two weeks, right? The trip was two weeks, babe, and I loved every bit of it. Now I'm, I'm trying to make sure I make enough money this year to go to Alaska, or Norwegian, <laughs> babe. I love. You know what? We made so many friends with the with the waiters and the waitresses. <laughs> between the Philippines and Indonesia. <laughs> and I told them all, I've been to both countries. And we were happy. <laughs> so that's my next planned trip. Alaska and Botswana. Oops, sorry. That's, that's my bucket list. And I'm going to look at U Ushaya. Ush yeah, Ushwaya. Ushwaya. Yeah, Ushwaya. Yeah, that sounds Ooh. really beautiful. Yeah, and we, we took the horses. We did a horse ride up there, uh, Kathy, in the mountains. <laughs> Me and Ella had been on horse in like four years since we've been out here in Rancho Palos Verde. <laughs> <laughs> I love horses, too. Yes. I do. Cool. Well, have a great day. Yes, ma'am. Fabulous. Um, I will say that anybody in L.A., there's two really cool things happening at Kulak's Woodshed this week in North Hollywood. Uh, Thursday night is Vinnie Golia, who is a multi-woodwindist, and he's kind of the king of new music. Wow. You know, kind of leaning towards avant-garde, but creative, yeah. improvisational. He's he's And he's been, a, like, a king for years. He's a teacher at... Um, Cal Arts. <clears throat> wow. Okay. That's Thursday night. And it's it's just such great music to be in the audience for. It's very, you don't fall asleep. It's really interesting and stimulating. And then uh, Kulak's, just for the jazz series, which I've been kind of stirring up. Yeah. Because um, Kulak's has all different genres. But uh, Friday night, we're having an open house and we're having a great jazz trio, Otmaro Ruiz and um, Ahmet Sezin and Anna Barrario. Wow. And so we're going to, you know, we're just going to schmooze and hear music and eat a little bit, you know. Wow. And Kulak's is really fun. It's like, it's like you're on a TV stage. It's, it's eclectic in there and they're, they are uh, live video, videoing it with like six cameras. And so you know, you do really feel like you're on a stage because that's it's, incredible. Yeah, it's really a cool, cool situation. But I, I hope to see you at the end of the of the month, right? Yeah, I'm gonna be yeah. there. Yeah, twice at the end of the month. Yeah. Okay. And in the meantime, I'm getting my knee replaced on Monday, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing a bunch of archives in the next week because I don't know how I'll feel. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I could be laughing. I could be crying. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, say hi to Ellen for me. And uh, it was really great to see you. You look great. It's just great to speak with you. And, um, you know, it's been a really nice day. Happy birthday. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. Bye, Kathy. <laughs>
my sweetheart. 